Well, I've got to say, after all the wind and rain and then the snow, uh, this morning was a fabulous walk up the hill to Upper Swainswick and the churchyard here at St Mary the Virgin Parish Church. Do you know, I've been coming here to St Mary's now pretty much for a year and I haven't really told you anything about the church itself, which is um, a little darling, a little gem. Um, a place where there has been worship, Christian worship, for 800 years and more. Swainswick was originally a wooded community, so it's quite likely that there was a wooden church building here. But this church, in its simple stone form, the first stone-built church, dates from the end of the 12th century. Uh, the porch behind me, the way into the church, dates from the 14th century, but step inside it and you can look above the original 12th century entrance to the church. And there you will see a richly carved 12th century doorway. It's late Norman. It has scalloped capitals and a round arch of zigzag and dog tooth motifs with two headstops, each of a man. Stepping back outside the church, um, let me tell you a little bit about the bell tower. That is quite unusual in that it wasn't built on to the end of the church, it was actually built into the church. Now the reason that was done was that the Lord of the Manor's estate is right next door to the church. He has his own doorway through which he and his family uh, would have stepped into the churchyard and straight through to another doorway which would have led directly to his pew so he would not have had to mix with the plebs uh, coming in through that uh, uh, 12th century doorway at the front on the south side. Now there was not enough room between his doorway and the church to actually build a church tower. Um, and no doubt he had enough influence to say, no way, will you, will you block up uh, my direct path, my private means of accessing the church on which, of course, I'm spending so much money. So that's why the church tower was built on top of the east end rather than added to it. It's um, a lovely sunny morning which um, leads me to one other uh, external feature that uh, on the south wall of the church there are two sundials. One of them is very primitive, it's just a hole that you can push a stick into when the sun is shining and it'll cast a shadow on onto one of the short incised lines by which you can tell the time. The other is set above it, uh, much more sophisticated, uh, set on a, a square tablet uh, with a metal rod and Roman numerals. So there was no excuse for being late for a service here. Um, the church is famous for several other things and there are other interesting things to tell you. Um, I'm going to leave the inside, the interior, uh, to another occasion, but the only other mention I wanted to make was there are three grade two tabletop uh, monuments, tombs, in this churchyard. Two out of three of them uh, are in a bit of a precarious uh, condition, not only listed, but listing. Uh, the church has secured the funds and uh, conservationists, I think, hopefully later this year, depending on how quickly we can get rid of this damn virus, uh, will be coming into the churchyard to restore them. So there we are, a, a short tour on the uh, exterior of St Mary the Virgin. Um, I'll go home now and put this online. Uh, whatever you're doing today, uh, stay safe, make the best of the weather while you can, get out, it's good for you physically and mentally. End of lecture. I'll see you soon.